Hey everybody, this is Dr. Joe Boria with this week's Thought Flash. Rice-a-roni, the San Francisco treat. <laughs> it's the only song I can think of it that has to do with San Francisco. This is my little trolley car. Dun, 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 dun. You know, we got to promote this thing, man. I got some big names coming in. I got Brad Glowacki, Dr. Matt Hubbard, and, well, Dr. Brad Glowacki too. And I got Dr. Pete Lombardi. And me, Dr. Joe Borio, we are going to put out a show for you on June 24th, June 25th. It's a Friday, Saturday. It's going to be one of our biggest events. It's right in San Francisco, right at the airport. I'm telling you what, it's going to be easy to get there. It's going to be unbelievable amount of fun. If you want to grow your practice, if you want to see more people, if you want to serve more families, we're moving more into cash. What's the stress of converting people from insurance to cash, how do you make it easy for people to understand the value of what we do? How do you get to run an office that's smooth and efficient where people enjoy coming in and people understand why they're there and people understand that it's a dramatic benefit in their health and in the health of, the, of their families? That's the only way that people feel as though there's value for them to pay. How do they know what chiropractic is all about? Right here, learn how to do it. Join our trolley car. This is our trolley car going up the streets of San Francisco. I totally want to say rice roni the San Francisco treat. It's got absolutely nothing to do with rice roni but it's a cute little jingle. What would I say? Uh, uh, Kyra Passion Consulting, going to be in San Francisco. So June 24th, June 25th. That is my promo. Made that myself. Probably couldn't tell by the high quality graphics that we have here at Chiropractic Consulting. Okay, that being said, let me put my expensive prop off to the side. Today I wanted to talk about uh, gratitude. Cicero said that uh, gratitude is not only the greatest of all virtues, it is the parent of all others. He said that in 53 BC, so obviously a long time ago. What does that have to do with today's Thought Flash? We really want to be in a state of gratitude. I, I shared a story today at one of our webinars with our with our clients, but it was actually about a, a, a member of our practice that I've been seeing 20 years. She was having, having such a horrible day. And, you know, not only through knowing her over 20 years, but also uh, by being in a state of gratitude and, and certainly being older and, and understanding it's not about me, it's about them and, and putting them ahead of yourself. Uh, she was having a really bad day. She had to wait a little while because we had a, another crisis with another individual who had some other health challenges and uh, so she had to wait a little longer than normal and she she really flipped out she she was uh, belligerent <laughs> to say the very least and she's in 20 years I've never had a, a, a moment with her that was even uncomfortable so uh, she was very um, belligerent to me she was belligerent to my staff she was an elderly lady and she just lost it and uh, I don't even say elderly lady she's an elderly member of our practice and and one that's in her late 80s and who's done very well by maintaining her health and nervous system and staying healthy and functional, she still works. I mean, if you can believe that, she's 87, I believe, 88. So, so I, say, I share that with you because what I do before I start my day, uh, before I go out and serve people, is I get myself in a state of gratitude. Sometimes it only takes me a moment. You know, I think about something. I, I have a few uh, people that have meant a lot to me in the years I've been a chiropractor, somebody serving people with healthcare. And uh, so I think about those people. And like I said, it immediately brings me into a state of, okay, I'm here for them. It's about gratitude. So I can turn off some days. I need more than a few moments. Some days I need minutes uh, or even longer, uh, depending on what's happening. Uh, I have challenges with staff. I have challenges with other practice members. I have challenges in personal life as well. I mean, we all have that, you know. So, so when you when you get yourself in a state of gratitude, what it does is it, it's the highest of all vibrations. It's the highest state of appreciation. It's the best place to be in all the time. I mean, if you could just sit back and go. You know, I am. This is like unbelievable. My life that someone bestowed upon me. Whether you believe in the design, a great design, or what have you, somebody gave you the body. Somebody placed us on this beautiful earth, and uh, we love and we have children. If if you're fortunate enough to have children, or certainly have maybe children in other ways, and uh, 
and you get to experience your life and, and develop friendships and long-lasting, lifelong-lasting relationships with individuals that, that come in your life. You have also relationships that maybe people come and go in your life, but certainly it, it affects you, it changes you as a person. And, uh, and that's the best place to be. So, so going back to this, this uh, I guess, experience that I had in my office, is she flipped out uh, um, and really was uh, out of line. But again, it wasn't about us. Had I been younger, I would have got my ego in the way and, and made it about me. Um, had I not been in a state of gratitude, I think I would have gotten defensive, challenged her, gotten upset with her, engaged with her in an argument. But I didn't. I, I, I mean, I, I always talk about rituals. Uh, Pete Lombardi, one of our coaches, always talks about rituals. So, you know, we always focus on getting yourself in a state. So because right before my... Uh, a lunch, uh, or right after my lunch break, right before my afternoon shift, um, we actually, uh, I talked to a couple of staff, I got myself in a state of gratitude, I went up, I had a couple of challenges, and then I had a, a deal with that challenge and that experience, and she left, and in a huff, she was very rude to my staff as well. So it, it affected me, it, it hurt my, it certainly hurt inside, because I'd been seeing her for so long, I don't want to end a relationship badly with anyone, especially uh, a relationship with a member of our practice for 20 years. I see her whole family. And, um, and uh, so she left. So I literally left that adjusting area. I went into another room for five minutes because I had to get in myself in a good state because I had probably 40 other people there that were waiting to be adjusted. So I had to be at my best when I went to room two. And I wouldn't have been had I just gone there. I needed to get myself away. And I you know, read, I carry a little card with me, I read that, I got me, you know, needed to calm down for a minute, I looked at a couple x-rays, I uh, uh, looked at a few things, and then I went back out and I started adjusting. Most of the people there were just, hey doc, you know, you're worth waiting for, I'm so sorry you had experienced that, my god, I love if I gotta lay here for 10 minutes or so just to relax and decompress. Uh, and the amount of time she waited was probably no more than 15 minutes by any means, it was probably a little less than 15 minutes. but. In any case, uh, you know, I went through and I wrote her a beautiful letter, a card, uh, telling her how much that I, I cared about her and how much I, it was an honor for me to, to be her doctor for all these years, to be her chiropractor. And uh, I hadn't sent it yet. I was going to wait. I wanted to wait a week till I was in the, in the purest state to send it to her. I don't mean to make myself sound like a monk and, or some saint because I'm, I'm far from it. But that's where I wanted to be. I wanted my intentions to be good when I sent her that. Well, who comes walking in Monday, um, yesterday, and uh, she comes walking in. I'm actually in adjusting room two. It's 10 minutes after three, and I'm right in the middle of an adjustment. And Betty comes walking in and uh, just grabs me and puts her arms around me and starts to cry, and I started to cry. And she said, I love you. I, I am so sorry. I had just the worst day that I can remember in so many years and she had lost a friend and she herself had some health problems. She had gotten an argument with her for one of her family members and um, it was a horrible day for her. So for her to wait there was, I think, torture for her because she, she had to be alone with her own thoughts, her own self, and she didn't like her thoughts and what she was feeling and I think that just made her more and more angry and, and as a result she lashed out obviously. So. Uh, so I gave her a hug and a kiss. I told her I loved her too. And I, you know, I just was so sad to have our relationship end at that point. And she said, I want to come back. Can I be here? I want you to be my doctor for the rest of my life. And, and I want to die, you know, I want to die knowing that I've been under care here in your office. And it was unbelievable. I probably had uh, not as busy at that moment, but I probably had 20, 25 people there. And I started to tear up and she started to tear up and a couple other people started to tear up. And probably 10 to 15 of the people that were sitting there were there the following Monday when she was there. And, um, and I just want to share with that with you guys because I'm a coach for chiropractic and, I, and I'm somebody that um, still practices, you know, and I still have these experiences. And I know some of you guys email me and I get emails from Australia and England and New Zealand and California, Oregon, Seattle, Texas, I mean, Canada, all over. And uh, now I'm getting some people from Costa Rica and Peru. So it's really exciting uh, to have that. But I want you guys to know that... Uh, I'm still in the trenches with you, you know, and I still, I still get stomped on sometimes and I still, my heart still gets broken some days in practice and uh, that was one of those days and after she came in and gave me a hug and a kiss and, and we 
we had that moment um, and I adjusted her and it was great to have her in my arms again to adjust her because I didn't think I was going to do that with her again and I was so sad that she was going to leave chiropractic you know at 80 something years old um, and I was worried about her health and her future and my day was phenomenal I mean you could have done anything at that point and and nothing would have been affected because that's one of those good moments one of those good stories you know some of us have bad ones that that end up badly and that was that was a good one that ended up good and the reason it ended up good and the reason it went as well as it did and i'm not saying it's easy and i'm not saying i haven't faltered in the past and i may falter in the future but i have to tell you that if you're in a state of gratitude if you do that ritual before your morning and you do that ritual or whatever you have that gets you in that proper state uh, in the afternoon, you will, you will handle those issues. They become less significant because your presence is significant as it is in the whole grand of scheme of things. It's not as significant. Your only view, your perception is from your view vantage point, your viewpoint. So from here, it looks really important, right? But if you had a lens that could look at everything inward, a lens out in outer space or a widening the lens from somewhere else, you're only this much of that landscape. So it doesn't mean you're not part of the landscape, it doesn't mean you're not important, it doesn't mean you can't have an influence in it, but it's a different way to look at the perspective. And when you look at it that way, you realize, you know what? There's a lot of other important things, other important people, other important events that are in that landscape. Boy, and if you could step back and be in gratitude uh, all the time, remember, it's the greatest of all virtues in the words of Cicero, and it's the parent of all others, you will be in a better state to serve people and you'll have a much better day. I'll tell you, I had a great day because I was in that state and I want you guys to have those same experiences as well. And I love being your coach on the Thought Flashes and I hope that you decide to join us, Chiropassion uh, Consulting with our success events because they will change your life. And I want you to be part of our mission, which is to grow really successful, and I say that not from a financial standpoint, but in every way, a successful practice. Uh, the great words uh, of a coach from Marshall uh, in a clip that I play at a lot of my events, and I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it, he said, the way you play your game today, the way you play the game today is how you will be remembered. Guys, how you practice every day is how you'll be remembered. And if you practice in a state of gratitude, in a state of service, in a state of putting people ahead of your, yourself, my dad always said, you know, at least put the interests of people equal, if not greater than yourselves, and you'll always come out on top. Um, that's great advice. So I'm going to share that with you because I'm sure his father shared it with him. Uh, that being said, guys, may urinate flow from above down. i got one more thing to talk about, and that is our event in San Francisco, Kyra Passion Consulting. The Success Seminar for you, June 24th, 25th. I want to see you there. I want to see your CAs there. I want to see everyone you know, everyone you can drag, any, any whiner, mopey, a mopey person, somebody said, I can't make it successful. I can't make it in practice. The whole, everybody hates chiropractic. Everything's down in chiropractic. Let me tell you, that's not how most of my clients are feeling. That's certainly not how I feel. And there's nobody that's going to care more about your practice. There's nobody that's going to care more about chiropractic than yours truly, Dr. Joe Borio with my helper, Dr. Pete Lombardi. Guys, love to see you right there in my trolley car in San Francisco. Talk to you guys next week. Best advice, he said each day.